Hello guys, welcome to the next section, Twitter Text Sentiment Classification. In this section, we will cover topics such as introducing kernel density estimation, extracting tweets using the Twitter package in R, the sentiment classification overview and approach, dictionary-based scoring, text preprocessing using the TM package, building a sentiment classifier in R using KDE, assembling an R Shiny application. Now we move on to the first video of this section that deals with kernel density estimation. In this video, we're going to generate some one-dimensional data and build some histograms. Histograms are a good way to understand the underlying probability distribution of the data. We generate histograms using this code block for reference. This code creates two artificial datasets and combines them. Both datasets are based on the normal distribution. The first has a mean of 25 and a standard deviation of 5. The second has a mean of 10 and a standard deviation of 2. By combining these data from these two distributions, the new dataset will have two peaks and a small area of overlap. Let us look at the first histogram generated. The output shows the bin size here and the locations here. What if we change the bin sizes? You can use this highlighted code for that. We provide the hist function with the breaks parameter, which is a sequence from 0 to 50 with a step size of 2. We want our bin size to be 2 rather than 10, which is the default value R is selected. This is how our new histogram will look like. As you can see, by varying the bin size, the representation of the data changes. You can test the same effect by varying the bin locations or dollar mids. The histogram depends on having the right bin size and bin location. The alignment of the bins with the data points decide the height of a bar in the histogram. Ideally, this height should be based on actual density of the nearby points. Can we stack the bar in such a way that the height is proportional to the points they represent? This is where KDE one-ups the histogram. A discrete random variable takes on a finite number of possible values. We can determine the probability for all the possible value of that random variable using a probability mass function. A continuous random variable takes on infinite number of possible values. We cannot find the probability of a particular value. Instead, we find the probability that a value falls in some interval. A probability density function is used to find the probability of a value falling in an interval for a continuous random variable. Let us look at an example. p-norm is the function to get the cumulative probability distribution function for normal distributions. That is the probability that a given value is within a range of a normal distribution. Here, we calculate the probability that a value falls between two standard deviations of the mean value, which we know from basic statistics is 95%. We can calculate this probability by looking at the probability that the given value is greater than the mean plus two times standard deviation. We then multiply that by two. It gives us the probability the values are in the tails of the distribution, so we subtract this value from 1 to get the probability that the values lie between mean plus or minus 2 times standard deviation to give the answer of 0 0.9544997. Let us see a univariate example using the density function to approximate the PDF of the given data. Now we will run it. Here is our density plot. This smoothed out plot from KDE gives us a better idea about the distribution of the underlying data. The density function in R uses a Gaussian kernel by default for each point in the data. The parameters of KDE are the kernel, which is used at every point to decide the shape of the distribution at each point, and the bandwidth, which defines the smoothness of the output distribution. Why use a kernel instead of calculating the density at each point and then summing it up? we can calculate the density at each point x base to 0 like this, where h is the distance threshold. 
This may give a bumpy plot as each point x base to i in the neighborhood defined by h receives the same weight. So instead, we use a kernel, where k is the kernel and h is the smoothing parameter. The kernel gives way to each x point x base to i based on its proximity to x base to zero. Hopefully, this video gives an understanding of how to use kernel density estimate to approximate the probability density function of the underlying data set.